Hey, welcome back everybody to another video. And this one, we're gonna give a little tutorial on how to set yourself up for your first raid because Tarkov doesn't give you any tutorials and this is punishing. So let me help you make sure you have everything you need for that first raid. Before we get started, if you feel that you like this kind of content, you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button, comment down below of what you want to see and things you need help with at Tarkov, and we could do this together as a community. So, this is your first day, you've logged in, you've made your name, you've picked your language, all that kind of stuff, and this is the screen you come up to, okay? First thing I'm going to tell you to do, go in here, go to your character and look at your stash. Alright, your stash is not going to look like this, it's going to look something more like this. Now. Everything in your stash is going to be examined for you already, okay? If you want some free experience, I highly suggest one of the things you do is you go in, you go to the traders, go to things. You're going to have a bunch of stuff that kind of looks like this, right? It's going to be grayed out. You're not going to know, like, really what it is, right? So you can either right-click on it and hit examine. It's going to examine it. You're going to get, you know, a little bit of experience depending on what it is, but it's something, right? Or you can click your middle mouse button and that will quickly examine all of the things for you that you want that you're clicking on now you can only do one thing at a time it takes a while okay but if you don't want to spend all that time the biggest things i highly suggest that you examine are things like magazines for guns okay make sure those are examined make sure the guns that you see that are there are examined because you cannot reload you can't do things with guns if they're not examined and you don't know what the stuff is okay so Make sure you have all that, at least that stuff examined before you go into a raid. So that way you're not running into issues with not being able to reload, not being able to shoot, not being able to pick the stuff up just because it's unexamined and you can't equip the stuff in a quick thing. Now for me, we're going to talk about things you need to bring out to raid in your first raid. Okay. I don't suggest your first raid being an online raid. All right. If you want to go in, you click escape from Tarkov, go to your PMC here, pick a map. All right. Pick a time, click next, hit enable offline mode. Okay, what this does is it allows you to go into a raid and you can learn the extracts, learn what the maps look like because you don't have a mini map. You don't have a map that you pull out of your pocket and it shows you exactly where you are. You can have maps that you can pull out of your pocket and view in game, but it doesn't tell you where you are. So you kind of have to use uh, terrain association and things like that to figure out where you are on those maps. But you click enable offline mode. You can enable, if you want some practice with shooting and stuff like that, you can enable PVE and select different difficulties or different amounts that you could choose, okay? But these, this is something I don't suggest as your first raid. We're gonna talk about things you're gonna take with you, okay? First thing is a gun. Go in with a gun. Don't go in with just your hatchet, okay? Don't suggest it, all right? That's for those super high-speed Chad pistol pistol runners and, ch or not pistol runners, but, uh, Hatchet runners that end up going zero to hero somehow. I don't know. That's that's not me. So I'm going to pick a gun. All right. Uh, I'm just going to pick this M4 right here because it's available. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to look at is I see that it's zero out of 30 here. All right. That means there was no bullets in that. All right. So that magazine's empty. So I'm going to remember that. All right. Now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pick. Um, there's a few different options. Right when you're starting out the game, though, you're going to start with some armor and some chest rigs. All right. So pick an armor. Right, you're gonna have some that might be look smaller than others, okay? But the armor is separated by class, class armor. Okay, so you're gonna come down here, you're gonna have your armor hit points, and you have your armor class. All right, the higher the number, the better for both of those. All right, so this one is an armor hit, armor class four. All right, it's gonna stop a lot more bullets than like an armor class three or armor class two. But this is your first raid. You're using what you have. All right, so go out there, use what you have. Don't be overly picky. So I'm gonna throw an armor on there. Right now, this armor was not a uh, rig, all right? It was just a piece of armor, okay? Just so you know how I did that is I just put it in place as I hold Alt and then click. So um, I put the armor on there and I took care of that. That's good, all right? I, I think armor is a necessity. Some people don't use it all the time. I personally use it all the time because it saves you. Even from the AI and the scavs and things like that, it saves you from just getting blasted after one shot and dying because this game is brutal and anything that could help you, is important right so now you have an armor piece here all right you need something to hold your magazines uh, or any meds any other equipment here you do have your four pocket slots here so if you're using something like a single slot magazine you don't have to come in with a rig but i highly suggest this i'm gonna pick this guy right here all right just so you guys know for reference here if you're trying to put uh, if you're putting an armored chest rig on okay it's gonna 
go into that slot there if you alt click and then you can't put armor on there it's gonna say you can't do it okay so that way you're not putting you're not doubling up your armor or anything like that and at the end of the day your weight matters and your weight sorry it's right right there right here so we're gonna pay attention to that number a little bit too okay now i'm gonna use a separate armor and chest rig because that's what i want to do now that we have your chest rig and armor figured out so you can protect yourself a little bit, we're going to talk about ways to carry stuff, all right? Now, with your carrying things and stuff like that, your rig being there and available, this is stuff where you could pull if you're going to reload or if you're going to uh, use a med, med or anything like that. We'll talk about those in a second, but you need to make sure you have your rigging in your pockets. If you put a backpack on, you're not going to be able to pull something right out of there. It's got to be in your rigger pocket to be able to like reload and, and do things like that. So, we're going to talk about those things, those things that you're going to need to use and maybe set up hotkeys for. First thing we're going to talk about here, magazines, okay? You need to be able to reload. All right, now, this is where we come back to this 0 out of 30, so this guy has no bullets in it, okay? So, I'm actually going to take that guy out so I can load it, all right? Now, now you see 0 out of 0. That's how you know that there's no magazine in your gun. You got a magazine here that says 0 out of 30, and I got these guys right here say 30 out of 30. So I'm actually going to grab those. Once again, I'm going to actually control click those, okay, uh, just to get them into my rig. If you were to alt click it, it doesn't do anything. All right. Even, yeah. If you were to alt click it, it doesn't do anything. So control click will put that stuff in the rig. Now we need to address the lack of bullets that we have right now. All right. Use a gun. You need bullets. All right. I have this ammo case here, but you need to make sure you have bullets that fit your gun. Okay. There's a lot of different bullets as you can see. All right. And getting it confused here it just you have there's so many options okay and that's a whole another video going into calibers and all that kind of stuff but for this one for this gun it says right here five five six by 45 nato i'm gonna click on this guy all right and it's going to say five five six by 45 up here and then it's going to say the type of ammo it is so now you know gun matches now you can't put the wrong kind of ammo into a gun so if you want a quick answer here if i try and do this it's not going to go in there Okay, but if I do this, it'll put one in there. Okay, but now it says slot is not empty, which means there's a bullet in there, and there's a bullet in the gun itself, just not in the magazine. Another faster way to do that, right, is you right click, click load ammo, and it's gonna give your options of the types of ammo that you have that fit that magazine, not fit that gun, fit that magazine, because there's several different types of mags that take different kinds of ammo that don't work in every single gun. Let's take for example, 556 five, and 300 blackout. They fit in the same magazines, but they're not taken by the same guns. But I'm gonna hit load ammo, puts 30 rounds in there, boom. I'm gonna drag my magazine down, put that guy in there. Now I've got a few extra rounds in here. I'm gonna take the extra rounds and I'm gonna put them in my secure container down here. Some of you may have a gamma. If you bought the Edge of Darkness edition, if you're buying just the standard edition, you're gonna have an alpha container. It's gonna be a little bit smaller. All right, now my ammo is taken care of. I got my mags and my ammo. And my gun that stuff done all right if you want to look at how to build uh guns especially from level one check out the card in the top corner of the screen right now the card will have a link to my playlist with all of my eft level one builds and there will be some more builds for level two level three level four as we progress through this wipe now the next thing we need to talk about is head protection now there's a few different kinds of things here this is a debated topic whether it's worth it or not uh, when it comes to wearing helmets versus hats versus uh, not wearing anything at all. All right, the biggest thing for me personally is I have something covering my character's face. All right, so something like this half mask or these balaclavas, things like that. Uh, anything that covers my character's face because it helps with camouflage and I get one tapped enough in the face, I don't need to get one tapped anymore. So that is the biggest thing for me. At this point, I can put a hat on, anything like that. I don't care. But as long as my face is semi-covered and it's not just this shiny white dude running around the middle of Russia... I'm a happy guy. All right. But in this scenario, this scenario, I'm going to put on some other stuff. I have a level four armor on. Last thing I want to do is just take one shotgun pellet to the head and die. So I'm going to put some things on. I'm going to pick a helmet here. This uh, SSH-68 can be bought from Ragman level one. So that is something you can have right at the beginning of the game. Um, and then the other thing we're going to talk about is headphones. Now, Veritas put out a really good uh, headphone video. I think he's doing an update on it if he hasn't already with the new ones that have been added. But headphones, it helps drown out white noise, but then increase noises like footsteps, gunshots, things like that. So you can hear a little better. This 
got this game is super big about audio and you need to be able to hear what's going on around you especially if somebody's trying to creep up on you so once again alt click i'm going to pick these contacts here because that's just what i have here i've got several different ones they all have different sound profiles like i said check out veritas's video he did a really good job explaining the differences in now when we're talking about gear there's one more thing you need to pick it's backpack all right you don't have to bring a backpack out with you because scavs excuse me scavs other players things like that all have uh backpacks on them so if you don't want to bring one out you don't have to personally i do a lot of looting so i bring backpacks out with me i make sure i have a backpack at all times backpacks come in different sizes different shapes all that kind of stuff good rule of thumb the bigger the backpack is in your stash the more room the more room it takes up so if you come up if i scroll up here to this guy this backpack looks a little bit bigger it's got a little it's got a bunch of stuff in it right now but it's about the same size but it is uh, it's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So it is a little bit bigger, and it's a five by five in the stash. This one, four, four by five in the stash. And there you go. So that rule of thumb works a little bit there, all right? But now this is all of the gear and crap that you're gonna have on you. Okay. Once again, we have the number over here. The weight system is going up. So you want to pay attention. Maybe we'll get into the yellow before I'm done with this and talk about the weight system a little bit, but. More weight, slower you move. Really, that's all there is to say about it. Now, um, we brought that extra ammo down here. We're going to talk about things that I'm going to bring in my secure container. This is first raid. This isn't permanently because you'll have keys and you'll have other stuff that you're going to bring, quest things that you're going to try and put in there. But we're going to talk about meds. Meds are the big one. All right. You're going to start with a few different kinds of meds. Most of the time, you're going to start with like uh, what we call the cheeses or the AI2s. Uh, this is just a health pack that you heal yourself with when you start losing health okay so i'm gonna take i'm gonna take one of them i'm gonna put it here in my pocket and i'm gonna hotkey it so you can either hold hover your mouse over it hit the number you want to hotkey it to or you can drag it down here and hotkey it if that's how you feel that you do okay um so i'm gonna bring a health pack now the health packs you can tell the difference here you've got like these things that uh the es marches and things like that bandages splints now they uh do not have a certain amount of uses it's a one-time use and it doesn't have a little health section down here okay whereas these car med kits the afax the ifax saluas all have a big number down here and that'll help you determine if it's going to heal you or not okay um and it says hp resource down here 100 out of 100 where if you click on a splint hp resource here you go okay and it's all of them will tell you what it does okay if it has any extra like little abilities and things right so splint is going to remove a fracture this one radiation exposure isn't in the game yet but this is a health pack that will help heal you when you get shot or if you break your leg or you fall damage things like that all right now that's just for health okay we have other things we have to worry about we got to worry about fractures i just talked about bleeding uh if you're in any kind of pain all right we're going to talk about uh those things and the things you need to bring here all right, now these are things that I'm going to put in my secure container personally because I'm not going to need to hotkey them. Because um, if I'm using them, I'm probably not in the middle of a fight and I don't need to use them quickly. Where the AI2, I'm going to heal myself up real quick if I need to move back into an engagement or if I am getting suppressed and I can't really move. I'm going to use that to heal real quick just to give myself the best opportunity the next fight. Now, painkillers. Painkillers is one that I don't hotkey it early in the game, but I do hotkey it later because you're going to use it in all types of situations. If your legs get shot and you can't run, you pop a painkiller, it's going to give you the opportunity to run. But me personally, my first raids, I don't keep it out because I don't like losing stuff. I'm kind of, you know, I still have gear fear and things like that. So I'm going to put it down here in my secure container. That will help you, like I said, if you get shot in the leg and you can't run anymore. If you're in any kind of pain, it's going to clear the fuzziness around your screen. All that kind of stuff just to get you moving and get you to the extract a little bit faster if you are in a dire scenario. Now you're going to have things like Vaseline as well, depending. It's some The stashes are different between Bear and Usex, so uh, you may have some other stuff and it comes with some different things. But... Usex come with Vaseline. You're going to have those that you're going to use uh, as a painkiller as well. Next thing is fractures, okay? You'll start with some of these ALU splints or just regular splints. If it doesn't have a number, it's a one-time use. All right, so I'm going to put that in my secure, secure container as well because you don't get fractures very often, but I do have them uh, just in case I do break a leg, break an arm, something like that because that inflicts pain as well. So uh, if you can heal that, it gets rid of the pain 
thing as well as getting rid of the fracture. Now, it's not a painkiller, though, so you can't just use it on something that says pain. You have to actually have a fracture which causes pain to use a uh, splint. Now, bleeds. There's two different types of bleeds. There's your regular bleeds, or light bleeds, and then your heavy bleeds. Now, light bleeds can be used or healed by a bandage. All right, bleeds are going to damage your body over a period of time. It's going to either black that limb out, or and then it's going to distribute that damage somewhere else. So if you have uh, regular bandages or these two out of two use bandages, you can fix those bleeds, and then it stops causing damage, but then you have to use something like AI2 to actually heal that limb. If you're, you know, if you're at 30 out of 60 or whatever, um, you can heal that limb with the AI2, but stop the bleed with the bandages. All right. Now, heavy bleeds. Heavy bleeds will make you you're going to bleed faster you're going to leave a trail of blood on the ground and it's going to take a significant amount of damage more away from you or a significant amount of health away from you as you not treat it all right so you have your um hemostats which are three out of three uses and then you have your as marches here and there's some other stuff to this all right these are not the only things that are going to fix those things but these are the two that i have all right and the ones that a lot of people start off with so um I'm going to bring, I, I'm going to put an Esmarch up here in my pocket and I'm going to hotkey it. All right. Because heavy bleeds will mess you up pretty quick. So I'm going to make sure I have those. And then I'm going to put a hemostat in my secure container. Now these, that way, if you get multiple engagements, you're doing multiple things over a period of time. You have that, uh, extra little bit of heavy bleed healing abilities. Now there are some like the Saluas, uh, IFAX, AFAX all do heal heavy bleeds. I don't know actually if IFAX do any more. I think they changed that, but um, I know AFAX and Saluas and the Grizzlies all heal heavy bleeds. So it just takes a bigger chunk of this 400 or whatever the number is. It'll take a bigger chunk away from that. So if you have the heavy bleed stuff, bring that with you. All right. Um, and then the last thing we're going to bring when it comes to medical stuff is the CMS kit or a surgical kit. These, when your limb gets blacked out, you can heal yourself, uh, or you can bring that limb back. It's a little bit of certain, you know, you pretty much just do a field surgery on yourself and that limb has health again. Now it brings it to one health and then you have to heal yourself with an AIT or a car med kit or anything like that. So this will bring the limb back. So if you black out a leg and you can't run and you don't want to use all your painkillers, Heal yourself up. If, uh, just make sure you're done your fight because it takes a few minutes to, or a few seconds. Well, we'll see. Use time. This one is 16 seconds to surgically repair repair yourself, and then you need some type of med kit or something like that to uh, heal the limb back up to whatever the health left on it. Because you do, when you use the CMS kits and the surgical kits, you do lose health from that limb, so it brings it back up to whatever the max health is now. Um, at that point, that's the gist for medical stuff, all right? A lot of your medical stuff for me, or at least me and my personal preference, puts gets put in a secure container because it's I use it so often because I suck. So the more I get to keep over a long period of time, the better, as you'll see, some of these are like 376, 376, 340. Now, I did find those in raid office scabs, but I did use them. Now, uh, the last couple of things we're going to talk about here, uh, grenades. So I enjoy bringing grenades with me um i got some of these grenades off of the christmas gift so i'm gonna bring grenades in because they are extremely useful whether you are trying to get an enemy out of their position or you have someone trapped in a room and you're gonna blow them up to make your life a little bit easier instead of pushing into the room you throw a grenade in there now there's a few different types of grenades uh for me i like bringing a flash and a regular grenade so the flash grenade blind somebody just like every other flash grenade out there every other game and then regular fragmentation grenades or hand grenades will uh, explode and kill somebody. Now, so they have different timers. They've got different explosive radiuses, all that kind of stuff. That's a whole other thing to talk about. But I am bringing grenades with me. You do start with grenades right off the bat. Uh, other than that, that's really what to bring into your first raid. Okay, you're going to have some slots left in your secure container. So if you do want to move some extra things down here, like you want your your S March or whatever heavy bleed stuff to move back down in there, you can. Um, but for me, my last little check here is I look at my character before I go into every raid, and I spin them real quick. I'm like, cool, backpack, armor, rig, gun, helmet, face is covered, and I move on to my first raid from there. So, uh, if you guys like this kind of video and you want to see more like this, feel free, leave a comment below, and we'll talk about things that help you get started in Tarkov and get everything rolling for you. If you 
like the video, please feel free to like. If you want to see more content like this, hit subscribe. We can go through this as a community. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.